Welcome to Nerd Stalker. I am Adolfo Fronda at Nerd Stalker on Twitter. We have a very special uh, guest here. Uh, I do. We I'm so used to talking with Craig. I uh, have an interview here for a very special event, and you are. Uh, my name is Cass Phillips, and I'm the executive producer of a conference called FailCon. Failcon, and that's what we're here to talking about. Uh, you know, if you're watching yeah. or listening to Nerd Soccer podcast, we mention it pretty much every week uh, on October 22nd Thanks. in San Francisco downtown in the lovely Julia Morgan Ballroom. Uh, mm -hmm. Cass is working on this amazing event. Can you tell us, uh, give us an overview yeah. of what Failcon is? Sure. So the conference started about four years ago uh, when I was actually working on my own startup with a woman named Diane Laviglio, who was working on a startup of her own. Mm -hmm. And we were attending a lot of these startup events and felt like you you hear these speakers and they're very inspirational talking about all the things that they did well. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to learn a lot of lessons from those. You don't know how to replicate their successes. And we really wanted to hear them talk about what they did poorly, about what went wrong, what mistakes they encountered, what you know, misconceptions they had about building a startup. Mm -hmm. And so Failcon is a conference we put together to do that where uh, influential speakers from the, uh, the industry, leaders and founders and investors will come to the stage and talk about the mistakes they made along the way and the failures that they had and how what they learned and if they were going to do it again, what they would do differently. And that really helps at an early stage so you know what mistakes not to make and what things not to do. Uh huh. So let's talk about, speaking of these, uh, the speakers that you have, the talent on hand and why you know people would want to come. Well, there's a ton of reasons why they want to come. Um, I'm surprised how much of an agenda you packed in and how many speakers you packed in for one day. It's, yeah. it's awesome. I mean, you're definitely, it's, you're definitely getting your money's worth here. It's definitely crazy. We broke it out actually into two solid tracks this year. We used to do a, a large room track and then a, a really small workshop area. And we've actually split it into two totally different tracks. The morning does start out with everyone together and a bunch of our keynote speakers, people okay. like um, Chip Conley, who founded Joao Aviv, um, and Gina Bianchini of uh, Ning and now Mighty Bell, um, Ben Ha of uh, well-named The Fail Blog. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the afternoon, we'll split into two equally sized rooms. One will focus on pre-launch and a lot of mistakes people make before they launch their company. And then one will focus on post-launch. Once you've raised some money, once you've got a product out there, what are some things can, that can happen while you're kind of building that product or working towards an acquisition? Oh, that's very cool. Let's um, yeah. talk about uh, some of these. I'm looking at the session, the agenda here, and it looks awesome. So you mentioned Chip Conley of uh, Joie de Vivre. Uh, his topic is called, uh, aptly enough, Despair, Suffering, and Meeting, Meaning, which mm -hmm. is really cool. And um, so what's, what's Chip's uh, overview of what that talk is about? So for him, it was that he actually personally went through a really hard time when he was transitioning between companies. Um, at the time, he didn't even know it would be a transition. He thought he was done with entrepreneurship. His last company had done really poorly. And he found that if he could switch his kind of mental idea of what that failure felt like, he could actually use the failure to motivate himself to do something new. And so the talk is talking about that idea of um, when is despair helpful? When can it help motivate you? Mm. And when can it turn into all out suffering and just stop you in your tracks? Mm. And how do you kind of emotionally deal with that roller coaster to take the, the emotional challenges that mm. come with failure and rather than let them kind of have you fall into a hole, let you use them to help build yourself up. And so it's recognizing that if you, if you pair despair or to pair suffering with um, creativity or anything like that, you can actually use it to your advantage. Yeah. So it's interesting because, uh, you know, Joie de Vivre isn't necessarily a tech company per se or, you know, a traditional not, tech startup no. or anything like that. Um, so it seems like the audience, too, doesn't necessarily have to be a tech startup or anything, although it's it seems to be like the, you know, um, in the air, the ethos here in the valley. In the mm -hmm. area. And that's exactly what it is. Yeah, that we we are trying to aim these talks so that you certainly can come as a small business owner or as someone who's starting to develop their own business that isn't necessarily in tech. Mm. But you should know that just my background is in startup technology and online technology, as is um, the other producer, Diane's. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our talks are going to focus on web design, on raising VC money, on scalability of your technology. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it. We have a number of talks that are also on how to measure failure, what questions to ask yourself early stage in your development, how to analyze your team dynamics and make sure that people are getting along well and, and let someone go early if they're not um, 
if they're if they're uh, you know not a good part of the team. Right, right. Um, and so those are things that obviously anybody can apply to their company, whether they're in technology or not. Yeah, yeah. I love uh, that you got Gina from uh, Mighty Bell and Dries and Horowitz. That's a huge. I do too. Um, yeah. Uh, they're very influential here as well and have a wealth, a dearth of knowledge, um, if you will. And uh, Scott Birkin, who's a very popular yeah. author who wrote uh, what Confessions of a Public Speaker and a whole bunch of other books. Mm-hmm. Um, so what is he coming to talk about? I know he's going to be a big draw for sure. Yeah, that's actually funny. I have to go check on what it is. I think it's called the history. Yeah, the history of failing to learn from failure. Right. So he's actually done a little bit of research. Thank you for the reminder um, on just kind of the history of failure in startups and in companies. For one of his books, he read up on a number of failures starting early in the 70s and running straight through till now wow. and watching the same mistakes being made over and over and over in mm-hmm. all of these technical companies. And so it's a little bit of a tongue in cheek talk and it's supposed to be very humorous, but it's commenting on kind of our inability. I mean, it's, it's ironic to have at our show because essentially he's saying it's almost impossible to learn from, from failures of other people that there are some failures you just have to make yourself. Yeah. And so how do you kind of get around those and deal with them? And so it's a little bit of anything poking fun a little bit at our own conference to talk about what are those mistakes that everyone seems to make and he'll point them out and suggest that you try not to make them. Mm-hmm. And then he'll say, but you, you probably will because some of these you just, you can't learn from others and you think that you're going to do it right. And it doesn't quite work out the way that you thought. Right. Right. So like uh, some of the things, you know, uh, over and over when we think about FailCon and some of the popular terms like fail early, fail often, right, type of thing mm-hmm. in order to, to iterate your way to success, I noticed that um, uh, Bennett Blank of Intuit's doing a talk called Rapid Experimentation, Pushing mm-hmm. the Boundaries of Innovation. Uh, very cool. Uh, How Team Structure and Dynamics Destroyed Our Product. Um, that's Mark mm-hmm. Alsnall. Arsenal, sorry, I'm butchering your name, uh, from Grasshopper, <laughs> and uh, five people I should have fired sooner, Cindy Alvarez of Yammer. I'm it's really looking one. forward to hear uh, from that. So how challenging was it to get all this amazing uh, uh, talent here for the for the talk? What's funny is it's actually getting easier every year. Mm-hmm. I think that people are recognizing that it's a very safe environment. It's a place where we yeah, are, are very supportive of our audience and of our speakers. Mm-hmm. Um, so almost every speaker that we had actually wrote to us asking if they could speak. Mm-hmm. Um, about half of them, we probably reached out ourselves and mm-hmm. invited them. Yeah. Um, and obviously all of them were a pretty quick yes. So I think that, that the industry is starting to accept these discussions a lot more. Mm-hmm. And so getting speakers like this who are being asked to to take the stage and share that their life wasn't easy, that the mm-hmm. process wasn't an immediate success, and that's what it frequently looks like now when we look at them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so getting these speakers was actually not too tricky. Um, it also came, it helped that I had been in the industry for a while, so I, I had some connections to some right. of the people that we were able to invite. What, how many fail cons is this now? In San Francisco, this will be our fourth. Uh Um, By this point, by the time that that conference happens on October 22nd, we will have hosted two in Paris, one last year and one this year. Um, We've hosted one in Brazil, which happened uh, this past spring. Um, We also hosted one in Australia that happened this past spring. Um, By October 22nd, our Singapore conference will have happened. That's taking place on October 14th. And then shortly after this one, we'll have one in Berlin. That's in the beginning of November. Um, India and India, Sweden, Israel, and London are looking to put some together, but they are on the calendar yet. Wow, that's amazing. So recovering yeah. from failure, Ben Ha, huh, Cheeseburger Network. I know this is going to be a huge draw. Can we talk about Ben and what what he's going to be talking about here? Ben is actually a great story because a lot of people don't know his past before the Cheeseburger Network. True. And he wasn't the founder. He actually inherited it. Um, from someone who just saw it as kind of a joke and he right. learned, he, he took his past experiences and learned how to develop it into an, a pretty serious company with a nice sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Um, but before that, he had, I forgot what the exact company was, but I know he raised a fair amount of money and struggled for a long time on a, a startup that just never, it never made it. It always kind of hovered at plateau. Mm-hmm. Um, and he ended up just letting it go and losing all of that VC money. Wow. Um, and so he'll talk a little bit about that transition and about how he kept a sense of humor through it, which let him kind of see this cheeseburger network as an interesting opportunity and actually got him to gave him the chance to, to raise money again despite his previous failure and perhaps even because of his previous failure and all of his past experience. Um, but it's a nice closing conversation because it will be, you know, very humorous, very lighthearted. 
Um, and really just talking about, you know, the whole idea that we, we keep trying and we try and try again. Right. And eventually it works out if you come to it with the right attitude and, with, you know, the right opportunities. So, um, you know, it's weird to talk about sponsors, but you have some really cool sponsors here at the event. Oh, here. So you, It's actually one of my favorite years for sponsorships. Yeah. You got like a uh, tagged here, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Squarespace. Uh, user voice, soft layer, SF City, uh, Backblaze, who we particularly love, which is a backup company. Yeah. Uh, Uber Conference, Survey Plan, and Tech Talks. Um, tell me uh, about your relationship with these guys, and and what what role will they be playing in the uh, in the conference? It's actually really great. I'll mention another one we just closed. We haven't been able to put on the website yet, which oh. is Microsoft. Oh wow, um, That's we're doing great. it. Yeah, That's great. so we're, we're actually getting our sponsors really involved this year, which is great. Um, for example, Microsoft's sponsorship is to buy lunch for everyone at the event oh, awesome. and to allow us to host a series of small roundtable discussions where we'll have one lunch table leader at each table, cool. and they'll have a topic ready that eight to ten people can join in that topic and share with them you know, the stories that they've had to deal with. Mm -hmm. So it'll be topics like if we have a scalability talk, mm -hmm. a talk on how to name your company, how do you find a name, how do you trademark it. How do you get the URL? Wow. Um, how do you make sure it's recognizable? Um, we'll have a couple on raising money. We'll have a few on just like developing your personal leadership style. How do you become a good CEO, become a good leader? Um, cool. So Microsoft will be hosting that. Tag has got a great after party that we're working on with them. Similarly, it's pretty engaging. Yeah. There'll be areas where you can just, yeah, and you can just <laughs> get your drink and you can network and it'll be an open bar. Um, but there'll oh, also be, again, boring. standing tables with leaders, so like a few lawyers, a few accountants, a few VCs. And you can go up and ask them, you know, personal questions on what, you know, if you need help with something, how could this lawyer help? How could this VC help? Cool. Um, Squarespace will be doing something similar during a coffee break. They'll have a small table set up where you can network with them during the coffee break. They'll have you know, information on what they're working on. Very cool. Yeah. And then while you're doing it, you get free coffee, which they're providing for us, which awesome. is great. Um, and then we've got things like user voice will, of course, host uh, one of the round tables. Um, they're just, they, they are They've hosted uh, talks at many of our past events, and they're, they're great leaders at those. Um, Backblaze, similarly, will have a table there where you can see what they're working on and that backup technology, which is actually on my computer as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really, we have a really nice lineup of, of tools that can really actually help early-stage startups, people that are right there in the thick of it with the startups, and really help them not fail. So I'm, I'm really excited that all of our sponsors kind of have a tool that can, can help uh, startups early on. Awesome. So if, if we want to get uh, any more information, like uh, where's the website? Do you guys have a blog or anything like that? Um, where, mm -hmm. do, where do we get all this stuff? How can we sign up? The easiest place, yeah, the easiest place to find more information on this, to see our blog and our tickets, are is at thefailcon.com. We had a slight failure where we missed our actual URL. <laughs> so it is thefailcon.com. And that has all the speakers. It has uh, the shows that are in other cities are listed there our blog and uh, a link to tickets, which I think that there's a Nerdstalker discount. So if you guys are tuning in, um, you have to remind me, Adolfo, you probably know better than I, but believe Nerdstalker gets you the 10% off of tickets. Yay. Well, awesome. Yes, thanks so much for talking to us. Appreciate it all of this time. And please show up to the FailCon October 22nd. Again, Julie Mo Morgan Ballroom in lovely San Francisco. I hope you can attend. Yeah. Thank you, Adolfo. It was great to talk to you again. Thanks.